Okay, next I will explain to you the traditional break-even chart. Previously, I have explained everything that you need to know about the CVP graph. So, if the question asks you to specifically draw the traditional break-even chart, make sure you just have three lines. So, the three lines are your total revenue line, your total cost line and your fixed cost line. As you know, your fixed cost is constant and it is 60,000 just now, 60,000. Okay, you have your fixed cost. Next, you draw your total revenue line and the intersection between your total cost and total revenue is your break-even point. Before, we have seen that your break-even point is 5,000 units. That is in uh, units and you look at your y-axis. So, at your y-axis, your 100,000 is your break-even point in value. Okay. So, you, if you have your... Uh, uh, margin of safety so margin of safety is the difference between this one your current sales and your break even point okay that is your margin of safety units okay and then this one is your margin of safety in value this one is 160000 so the difference is 60000 so that 60000 in rm is your margin of safety in value uh, this is the area of your loss and above your break-even point that represents your area of profit. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, angle of incidence. So this, sorry, uh, this one is your angle of incidence. So this is your, sorry. Okay, okay, this one is. This one is your angle of incidence. So, as mentioned earlier, it occurs when the entire sales line crosses the cost line from below. So, that is the angle at which the sales line intersects your total cost line. So, it indicates how efficiently the company is making profit. So, it suggests that the rate at which the company is making the profit. So, if you have your angle of incidence, is small, that means the company is incurring more of your variable cost. So, as a rule of thumb, the higher the angle of incidence, okay, the higher the uh, angle of incidence, the more is the profit. Means if you have a bigger, a bigger line, means uh, the the area here. If let's say you you have something like this, for example, so your angle of incidence is higher. If your angle of incidence is higher, what happens? So you have more profit, right? You have more profit. So and vice versa. Or you can say that the profit is being earned by the company is at a higher rate. So not, normally we would prefer to have a larger angle of incidence. What about the margin of safety? Of course, the company also wants to have a, a higher margin of safety. Why? Because that margin of safety acts as a cushion for you to so that you can you are operating at let's say uh, 12,000 okay so you, if you are operating at 12,000 your margin of safety is 7,000 so you are allowed to reduce any sales so how many units that you are allowed to reduce is 7,000 so at 7,000, if you reduce 3,000, you are still on the safe side. That means you are still making profit. But here, if you are, for example, you reduce 3,000. After that, can you reduce by one, if you are operating at 8,000 units, for example. If you are operating at 8,000 units, if you reduce your sales by 1,000, is that okay? Yes, that is still okay because you are still making profit. Okay, if let's say you are operating at 8,000. What if you reduce your sales by 1,000? Oh, that is still fine because now I'm operating at 7,000. At 7,000, I'm still making profit. 
Okay, what if I reduce my sales by four thousand? Oh, I am in a dangerous situation. I the maximum that I can reduce is only three thousand. If I reduce more, if I reduce more than three thousand, then I will enter the area of losses. So margin of safety acts as a cushion for you to identify how many units that you are allowed to reduce your production or your sales before you incur any losses. Okay, hopefully you can understand that better. Thank you.